Um, alcohol delamination has been around for uh, several years now. It's an actually an old procedure, but it's got new indications for this particular procedure, and that includes diagnostic and therapeutic indications. The most common uh, indication is likely to be recurrent erosion syndrome, and that's where the corneal epithelium, the front layer of the eye, uh, peels off, usually after some traumatic injury, either a, a fingernail in the eye or a, br a branch in the eye. That leads to recurrent erosion where the, the epithelium keeps falling off and it's an incredibly painful and, um, uh, condition that really affects your lifestyle. It can happen on, on a weekly basis and last hours and hours and it's intense pain and excruciating pain. So patients are very uncomfortable with this. This uh, technique is fairly um, uh, definitively uh, curative of this particular condition. Uh, and that's a, a new, new indication for this and it's developed by Professor Dura in Nottingham and it's working really, really well. I've performed quite a few procedures in here now at uh, Blackpool Victoria since I've been here and they've all been highly successful and patients have been very delighted with the outcomes. But the procedure can be done in the outpatient, so more commonly it's done in the operating theatre under sterile conditions. And generally it can be done under local anaesthetics, so patients are generally awake. The younger children are obviously asleep for the operation. And essentially, we, we, I look at the cornea, dry it as much as possible, and you can always find out uh, areas of really weak epithelium that's not sticking down to the cornea. And that's the area I want to target. Uh, it's a zone marker that has a wheel in it, so it's, it, it takes volume of, uh, of alcohol. And I dilute the alcohol down to about 20% and place it in that wheel for about 40 seconds. After that 40 seconds, I remove the alcohol and dry out the epithelium once again, and then it's literally just scrape off the epithelium, and it comes off in a really nice, clean sheet. After putting the contact lens on the patient and giving them appropriate antibiotics, it takes almost about a week for it to fully heal. Probably leave the contact lens on for a minimum of two weeks to ensure that the cells do heal appropriately. Um, after that, I expect that the, uh, the procedure will be fairly curative and the patient shouldn't have any other problems after that, although I'll do monitoring for a short while after. Well, my sight was actually really bad. It was blurry, it was hard to see. If dust got in it, anything, wind, eyelashes, so I couldn't really live. Now I can go swimming, which I love. Uh, I can play sports, football, I can do everything what a normal kid can do, what I couldn't do before. Actually, I was going to go to uh, work experience for BAE, which I probably couldn't do before. But now I can because it's round with the jets, I can do it now. My life is brilliant now. As before it wasn't, it was really bad. But now it's brilliant, I can see, it's fine. It's, I just have to wear a hat for like a few weeks but that's fine. I have to put antibiotics in because if there's a chance of infection then it's all gone wrong. So. It has a genetic disorder that's passed down through the generations on the male side mainly where the skin actually tears off his eyes for no apparent reason, it doesn't have to be trauma, just wake up one morning no skin on his eyes, which is obviously agonisingly painful. It affects his vision, he can't open his eyes, he can't see, he can't go to school, anything like that, he's just totally grounded, dark rooms, no light. And now, so far, touch wood, it's, um, it's a case of this shouldn't happen again. He should be just a normal child, get up in the morning, open his eyes, go to school. Instead of waking up every morning thinking, is it going to be a catastrophe? Are we going to be out of school for two weeks? So, yeah, he can be a normal child. Oh, he can actually go on holiday. <gasps> We've only been on holiday once and we had to take so much medication and all the bandages in case of an emergency, letters for the surgeons. And it was so traumatising, we never did it again. So we can actually go abroad now. And that will be amazing. All because of the surgery, yes, yes. We, we did try to get surgery done when he was younger. It was a different type and obviously probably more severe, but they wouldn't touch him. Nobody would touch him under the age of 18, which would have been another three years of suffering and all of his school, everything would have been affected even more than it is. So yeah, my thanks, it's mm -hmm. made an amazing difference. One of the problems with recurrent erosion syndrome specifically is that it's been notoriously very difficult to treat and patients do come back to our casualty department on a very regular basis. Um, so this, this particular technique, because it's curative, uh, is a real big innovation in that technique. Um, there are other techniques we can use, such as lasers, anti-strong punctures, but these are more invasive, very expensive. This is a relatively easy procedure um, related to cheap procedure and it can be done in the outpatient department as well so I think it will take off in the future. 
think the procedure itself, because it has diagnostic uh, as well as therapeutic indications, is really important. So if there are conditions of the epithelium that actually we can't fit a name to and can't diagnose, we can actually remove it and send it off to the lab uh, and have it seen in the lab to make a diagnosis histologically. So that's an added advantage of this procedure. Well, the actual procedure um, is an uncommon procedure for therapeutic and diagnostic uh, indications in the UK. It's however very common in using laser refractive surgery. Uh, in Dominic's case, he's a young, young boy at school and it's really affecting his school life. I think he was missing about 40% of his schooling uh, due to the painful condition, uh, nature of the condition. So for him, I think it, it's a life-changing procedure. Um, performed his left eye and he's been symptom-free for a few months now. And his right eye, which he performed recently, is going equally as well. He's now back on his feet, uh, taking further education and really doing well at school. So I think for someone like him, laser refractive procedures or laser procedures are, are really uh, not appropriate. And other procedures that may cause longer-term problems, like anterior stromal puncture, again, may not be appropriate. So this is a very uh, good, very uh, easy procedure to use for patients like him.